Slowly, an injured boy turned on the light switch. He looked at his reflection in the mirror with anger and ripped off the bandages covering his face. He cursed at Du Chong Su, vowing to make him pay for his actions. In the past, at Taekon Middle School, a student blocked the restroom while operating his phone. Slapping sounds can be heard from outside the restroom. When other students tried to enter, the student at the door insulted them and directed them to use another restroom on a different floor. Inside the restroom, a group of students are bullying Choi Bek Ho, who stood timidly. They debated whether he had closed his eyes nine times or more. Huang Jiai Te, holding a shoe of Bek Ho, called him forward and asked him to perform well since it will be the last time, hitting him in the face with the shoe. Noticing Bek Ho closing his eyes again, the students at the back exchanged money for a bet they had made. The student who lost the bet questioned Bek Ho if he was purposely closing his eyes since he had done so 10 out of 10 times. Ji Tae suggested the reason for Bek Ho's actions was his strength, and if they disagreed, they could play another game. Bek Ho interrupted Ji Tae, asking him to stop as lunchtime was almost over and promised not to close his eyes the next time. Ji Tae curses him and throws away his shoe. He asks Bek Ho if he is crazy and wants to clarify that if he tries hard, he won't close his eyes the next time. When Bek Ho tells him not to misunderstand, Ji Tae asks if he is funny to be laughed at. Bek Ho says that cannot be true and smiles at him. One of the students who lost the bet tells Bek Ho to hit Ji Tae since he is not that strong and claims he will change the member if Ji Tae loses. Bek Ho says he cannot beat Ji Tae and asks him to stop saying such things since Ji Tae will get angry. This makes the guy very angry and steps forward, asking Ji Tae to move aside. He punches Bek Ho in the face when Bek Ho asks if he made a mistake. The punch made Bek Ho spill blood from his nose. Out of fear, Bek Ho asks him to stop hitting. He asks if they are friends of his just because they talked a little, for them to obey his command to stop hitting him. Turning back to Ji Tae, he tells him the reason Bek Ho is talking back to him is because he hasn't done anything to make him fear. He points out that students keep thinking that they're easy if they don't make themselves clear and proceed to open a closet which contains the cleaning kit for the restroom. He checks for something which is good and shows us a broom with a hard end. He calls Bek Ho and tells him to get hurt and swings the broom towards him with a great force, hitting him on his head. The force of the shot made him bump his head to the urinals behind him. Seeing this, the other students began to laugh at him for bumping into such a dirty area. As Bek Ho trembles with pain and fear, he points out the broom at Bek Ho and tells him to stand up without any delay. Bek Ho obeys him and stands his ground. The students behind them talk about the absurd thing he is doing just because he lost some money because of Bek Ho. He replies that he is not a devil and that this is a sort of education. He explains that they cannot talk back to them and defines a true education when he receives such beatings regularly. He begins to take another shot at Bek Ho with the broom and asks him to stay still while closing his eyes since he is going to finish him in one try. When the broom is near to Bek Ho, he thinks he is really done for if the broom hits again on his head and sees the other students from his red eye, laughing at the person hitting him and calling him devil. One of them asks who will buy them snacks if Bek Ho is dead. Bek Ho questions himself whether it is okay for him to die and quickly evades the broom at the last moment. The broom hits the water supply pipe on one of the urinals and it comes out due to the impact. Everyone is shocked to see him dodge the broom. This makes the guy hitting him angrier and starts to swing the broom towards him again, cursing and screaming why he'd avoid when he wanted to finish it in one blow. Bek Ho, with a lot of focus, recalls something he read in a book one day about soldiers. It said, when the soldiers feel the crisis of death in the war, suddenly time goes slowly for them and memories tangle up faintly and muscles all over their bodies explode with sudden bursts of energy. Bek Ho feels the same way in that situation and sprints towards him faster, screaming on top of his lungs and catches his neck and pins him down to the ground. Being in a rage, Bek Ho continues to hit every person in the restroom, kicking them and mopping the floor with them without giving any chance for them to hit back. After a brief amount of time, he comes back to his senses and wonders what has happened in the restroom. He is the only person standing in the room, while all the others are lying unconscious with bruises in different parts of the restroom. Two years later, at present day Sin Hyung High School an angry figure walks past some students in the corridor of the school with a brick in his hand. The students recognize the fierce figure as Choi Bek Ho from Class 7. Looking at his face and the brick in his hand, they conclude that he is going to fight someone again. 
One of the students tells the others not to whisper loudly as he is going to hear it. Meanwhile in class 2, a student calls out to Chong Su, who is sitting idly on the chair and asks what he is doing. He asks Chong Su to come to the canteen along with him since Yang Geology is going to treat them. With a smile, gets up from his chair and the three students start to walk out. Suddenly, Beck Ho comes to the class, standing with an angry face. One of Chong Su's friends wonders why he is here. Yang Geology asks what Beck Ho brought this time and sees the brick in his hand. He walks towards Beck Ho and questions his actions, telling him to get out of here. Beck Ho calls the minions and orders them to get out of his way. Before they can ask anything, he throws the brick in his hand towards Chong Su who stands behind the others. Chong Su dodges the brick easily, which causes the brick to smash the glass window behind him and make it fall onto the ground. Beck Ho charges quickly towards Chong Su with his fist, ready to punch him screaming that he informed them not to band together. Chong Su also charges forward and kicks Beck Ho with his knee on his face. After that, he gets on to the rear of Beck Ho, hitting him on his head from behind with his elbow. The hit made Beck Ho fly across the classroom, displacing all the benches and desks, finally crashing onto the ground. The other students in the class were shocked to see this fight. Beck Ho regains his posture and with blood all over his face and cheeks and asks Chong Su if he is looking down on him again, threatening if he wants to die from his hands. Yang Geology says that he is so rude towards Chong Su. Chong Su stops him and says he will take care of him. Seeing Beck Ho lifting a chair to throw, Yang Geology shouts to inform Chong Su. Beck Ho throws the chair onto Chong Su, while saying that it's not enough to stick together. Beck Ho claims Chong Su is still looking down on him. Chong Su, seeing the chair thrown at him by Beck Ho, remains calm and catches the chair with one hand. Yang Geology and the others who are witnessing the scene are shocked to see him catch the chair. Only zero. One percentage of the population has a hero factor who are cool-headed, fast and overwhelming aura around them. Beck Ho closes the gap between them and tries to punch Chong Su. Seeing this as an opening, Chong Su quickly dodges his punch by going into the air towards his right, leaving him no chance to block and hits Beck Ho on his head with the chair in his hand. Beck Ho glass on the ground and trembled with pain. When Beck Ho tries to get up, Chong Su hits him again on the face with the chair to put him in his place. Onlookers in the classroom ponder the possibility of Beck Ho being killed by Chong Su. Yang Geology says maybe Chong Su won't kill him. With a cold face, Chong Su stops beating Beck Ho and throws the broken chair away. He turns towards his classmates and questions if they can go to the cafeteria now, with a smiling face. Yang Geology welcomes him and says the treat is on him. Meanwhile, Beck Ho, who is lying near the broken glass pieces, picks one in his hand and stands up. Yang Geology tells Chong Su to look at Beck Ho. Both of them stand face to face. Chong Su tells Beck Ho that he is out of his mind and questions him if he is going to stab him with the glass piece. Beck Ho stands silent, not knowing what to answer. Chong Su tells him to do it. Humans who are in the 0.1% with hero factors are not only cool-headed, fast and overwhelming but also don't know fear. So, everyone prays that such a man should be on the side of good. Beck Ho advances towards Chong Su to stab him. When Beck Ho is right about to stab Chong Su, he evades and punches Beck Ho on his neck. The shock Beck Ho felt made him lose the glass piece from his hand and stands like a state with the pain. Chong Su looks down at him with an evil smirk. Beck Ho falls on the floor after becoming unconscious. The other students wonder if he is dead and question if he was breathing. After a brief moment, he regains his consciousness and stands up for another fight with Chong Su. He screams that it hurts and threatens Chong Su, while cursing him. Suddenly his throat starts to hurt, making him unable to talk. Even in such a situation, he asks the whereabouts of Chong Su to the other students in the class. They inform him that Chong Su went to the cafeteria. Beck Ho places his hand on his neck to ease the pain and finds a glass piece on his palm. He squeezes his hand in anger and decides to beat him first, and thinks about the reason he cannot beat him. He wonders who Chong Su actually is. Meanwhile at the cafeteria, Chong Su asks his friends to discuss Choi Beck Ho, and questions his existence. One of them says that he attacked Chong Su with a broken glass, which is crazy. They claim if it weren't for Chong Su as his opponent, others would have died by Beck Ho's hands. With a serious look on his face, Chong Su asked how many times was it that Beck Ho attacked him. 
One of his friends claims it has been 10 times since their freshman year. Another one says Beck Ho might forget that he lost since he faints every time and praises for his efforts. Yang Geology claims Beck Ho keeps on doing that since he just keeps looking at him and asks if they visit him to educate him properly. Yang Geology asks Chion Man about the class which Beck Ho is in, to which he thinks it is class 7. Chong Su claims Beck Ho is not the one to quit just because he was hit, which they have experienced by looking at him. Chong Su continues to say, if Beck Ho is going to quit then he wouldn't have come to them 10 times. He asks Chion Man to find out what is wrong with Beck Ho. In class 7, a group of students are building another student. They poured the milk on him because he brought white milk instead of strawberry milk. One of them says that he doesn't wash himself anyway and asks him to use the opportunity to wash himself. Seeing him giggle, one of them gets angry and questions if he is joking for him to laugh. They ask if he wants to get a true education, to which he apologizes repeatedly. The other students ask him to continue the act of washing himself, to which he starts to imitate a person who is washing his face. They ask him to take a shower since he had to take one later, and the student starts to imitate taking a shower. Just when they are trying to make more fun of him, Beck Ho walks in and questions the group's actions. They try to manage the situation. One of them whispers that he is in a bad mood since he was beaten by Chong Su. Another faces Beck Ho and says that he doesn't take a bath that often, and he could get sick if he is not clean, so they were teaching him a lesson. Beck Ho quickly punches him in the face for bullying a student. The other students claim that he did it himself and they are just watching him. Beck Ho starts to walk towards the person getting bullied and walks past the other students. Beck Ho turns back and asks the person he hit earlier to wash his face since something is wrong with it. He cursed them and warned everyone not to touch Zhang Beck, the student who is getting bullied, or else they have to pay with their life. The same evening, Zhang Beck calls Beck Ho while he is walking down the corridor and offers him a strawberry milk with a great smile on his face. Beck Ho, with the same vexed face, asks what it is. Zhang Beck says he is thankful to him for helping him in the last incident. Beck Ho kicks away the milk carton from his hands, which shocks him and the others who are watching them. With a slight shiver, Zhang Beck says he will buy him something else if he doesn't like strawberry milk. Beck Ho says he is more disgusted with him than the others and tells him not to pretend and walks away. Zhang Beck stood still without saying anything. Chong Su along with Chion Man and Yang Geology are walking home. Chion Man says that he looked into Beck Ho from a person who went to the same middle school as him. Chion Man claims Beck Ho has had a turbulent life and tells them to listen to this story like they're watching an American drama. Chion Man starts the story by labeling Beck Ho's childhood as a loser, which shocked the other two. Chion Man asked if they knew Taichan Middle School, which was the school of bullies and the school where only the song survived. Beck Ho being the smallest and shortest student became a good target for school bullies. He naturally became an object of harassment and neglect. One day, Beck Ho tried to change his position but he went against the wrong opponent, who was a well-known school bully. Chion Man continues to say about the change in nature is his position into an object of disregard, blatant violence and extortion. Beck Ho tried to fight against him once but was defeated easily, and then became a hitting target for the bullies. Chion Man thinks it is where his excellent tenacity was created. In his senior year at the junior high school, Beck Ho awoke one day and knocked down five bullies at once, changing his position himself. Chong Su couldn't believe he took down five people at a time. Chion Man justifies that he is as strong as Chong Su, and he probably beat Yang Geology. Chion Man resumes the narration and tells them, since the day of his awakening, Beck Ho has been beating all the bullies and telling them not to stick together. Chong Su recalls Beck Ho says the same thing to them, and wonders if he has become an apostle of justice who defeats the bullies. Chion Man clarifies that he often attacked the victims who tried to offer their thanks to him. Yang Geology claims he is not consistent and questions his condition, which might get damaged after getting hit. Chong Su concludes that Beck Ho is a sick person and they should not hate sick people. He decides to take care of him with love from that moment onwards. Yang Geology questions his decision since he had hit him like he was killing Beck Ho with the chair. At the same time, Beck Ho, who was walking to his home, comes across an alley where he sees three high school students puffing on cigarettes. Beck Ho stares at them with a serious look. One of the students recognized his uniform, which is of Sin Hyung High School. 
When they asked Beck Ho the reason for his looks, he took off his bag. One of them threatens Beck Ho because he wants to fight with him. The other student beside him tells Beck Ho not to mess up with him, since he is Sin Myung's sixth younger brother. Beck Ho throws his bag onto the little brother of Sin Myung. After taking a hit from his bag, he screams at Beck Ho if he has a death wish. Beck Ho orders them not to stick together since he wants to kill him. They decide to beat Beck Ho up. Beck Ho thinks this is going to be fun, since he is Sin Myung's sixth younger brother. Sin Myung's sixth younger brother orders the other two beside him to get rid of Beck Ho. One of them advances towards Beck Ho and tries to punch him while saying Myung's sick doesn't even know him and that he is picking a fight. Beck Ho watches the punch reach him and takes it head on using his head, which breaks the person's wrist. The other person quickly approaches him and gives a right cut to Beck Ho. Beck Ho, while taking the impact from the punch, grabs the person's neck with his left hand while he asks if Beck Ho is looking down on Taesung Hai. Beck Ho punches him so hard that he leaps backwards, spilling blood from his nose. He claims Taesung Hai is just a gangster school and concludes Taesung Hai is not so great after looking at them and they only trust on some people to play tricks. Sin Myung's sixth younger brother from behind swings, a wooden stick on Beck Ho and screams at him to die. The stick breaks after hitting his head. Beck Ho goes into his awakened mode after blood drops from his head. He beats the hell out of him and continues to punch his face till one of them pleads Beck Ho to stop hitting him or else he will die. He comes to his senses and sees his face which has swollen due to his beating. Beck Ho warns them not to stick together in the future. He picks up his bag and thinks he was too naive that there's no need for him to fight versus Chong Su who is like a monster. Beck Ho turns back and questions the strength of his brother, Sin Myung Sik. While trying to stand up, he says he was informed about him before the fight started and asks if he feels he had messed up. He continues to say that his older brother Sin Myung Sik is the leader of Taesung Hai and a gangster living in Daesung Group, and even the leader of Beck Ho's school Kong Taek Bong is under his brother in the organization. He continues to say that there is no use to regret now since his brother will find him tomorrow and pay back multiple times. Beck Ho says he doesn't care about a gangster or anybody, and calls his brother a loser. Confused on how to respond, he questions Beck Ho if he wants to die while addressing him as Sir. Beck Ho orders him to shut his mouth and tells him to inform his brother to find him if he has any problem and introduce himself as Du Chong Su, a second year student in Sin Hyung Hai. The following day, at Sin Hyung Hai, two students in the corridor laugh at Beck Ho for having a big band aid on the back of his head. He turns back and asks if they are talking about him. They felt a chill under their spine after they knew it was actually Beck Ho. When they apologize, he warns them not to go around in groups and says they are dead if he finds out there's one more person with them. They let out a big sigh after he left. Beck Ho thinks he has a very important situation ahead and decides not to waste his energy. He recalls the words of Sin Myung's sixth younger brother that his brother will come and pay him back multiple times for what he did. He thinks if his brother is really Sin Myung's sick, then it won't take a lot of time and decides to beat him up after loosening up from other situations. Beck Ho suddenly encounters Yung Jin Su, the second in for the third year. He wonders why the third years have come to the second year classroom. Yung Jin Walla into class two and sees Chong Su laughing. He catches a student's head and bangs him to the desk while calling out Chong Su and cursing him. Chong Su walks to confront him while the other students beside the fallen student help him to get up. With an angry expression, Yung Jin questions what he was doing. Yung Jin Su calls Chong Su to come forward while cursing him. Yun Geology gets frustrated with the senior's behavior and actions. Chong Su stops Yang Geology and says it is not the time and to stay calm. Chong Su walks towards him and questions his actions. Yung Jin Su gives a tight slap and asks what he was doing back then. Yang Geology gets more frustrated and is about to move forward but gets stopped by his friend Chion Man, who tells him to listen to Chang Su. Yung Jin Su says it's because he beat up the brother of Taesung Hai Sin Myung Sik, Take Bong is in trouble. He asks if Chang Su's actions were on purpose, to make trouble for his seniors. Listening to all this, Chang Su is surprised enough to say anything. When Yung Jin Su asks him to say something, Chang Su bows in front of him in apology for his actions and for making them come to him because of this which has caused trouble for the seniors. Chang Su declares that he will deal with the problem himself and not let any seniors get into trouble anymore. 
Young Jin Su says he understood and asks him to raise his head. Jin Su claims he knew that Chang Su would cause trouble one day, but not of this kind. He orders him to take some hits from the kids sent here from Taesung High and in the meanwhile, he'd out some good words for Take Bong to move it over quietly. When Chang Su thanks him, he asks him to do better and leaves. Beck Ho sees the seniors in the corridor and thinks that their years have started to move within a day and he thought of them as a joke yesterday. Beck Ho thinks of waiting for the events to unfold for Chang Su. Suddenly, Chion Man calls Beck Ho from behind and asks if something good is happening for him to be that excited. Beck Ho looks back to see Chion Man and tells him not to mess with him, calling him a mere underling of Chang Su. Chion Man tells him to stop taking nonsense and asks him to come somewhere else to have a talk with him. Beck Ho looks seriously at him. Meanwhile in Class 2, Yang Geology confronts Chang Su for apologizing for something he didn't do and asks the reason since those devotees are just picking him up for his faults. Yang Geology suggests gathering their people and crushing them once and for all at the rooftop since he can't let it slide. Chang Su agrees that it is an unfair matter. When Yang Geology asks the reason, Chang Su says he thinks Kong Take Bong will counter back. At the same time, on the rooftop of the school, a group of seniors along with Yung Jin Su arrive to see Kong Take Bong who is sitting in a chair with nuts in his hand. Take Bong questions Yung Jin Su if he went to see Du Chang Su. Yung Jin Su tells him while sweating that he had already informed Chang Su about the matter, so he no longer needs to be concerned. Hearing this, Kong Take Bong crushes the nuts in his hand and becomes angry because he was told not to worry. He calls Yung Jin as sloppy even though he is the number two in the school and because of that he is being played by those second years. Jin Su apologizes and says he will perform better in the future. Kong Take tells him to speak properly, calling him pig head. On the same day, near the storehouse at school Beck Ho drops his bag aside and asks Chion Man if he wants to say something to him or have a fight. Chion Man says he isn't the type of person to use his body. Beck Ho asks if he wants to have a verbal fight with him, to which Chion Man doesn't answer. Chion Man accuses Beck Ho for selling Chang Su's name and tells him not to lie since he saw Beck Ho having fun from outside the class when Chang Su is getting beaten up by the seniors today. Chion Man warns him not to use Chang Su's name any further and claims that he can never win against Chang Su. Beck Ho gets irritated by his claim and advances towards him to punch him. Chion Man quickly evades his punch and says that he isn't the type of person who uses his body more. He asks him not to swing his arm and to use his head to talk things out, and says it is the reason why he is not a match against Chang Su. Beck Ho claims Chion Man is having fun since he managed to avoid his punch once and says that he knows how to run his mouth, being Du Chang Su's servant. Chion Man quickly grabs him by his arm and turns him upside down, pinning him on the ground. Chion Man clarified that he is not his servant and offers to help Beck Ho to win against Chang Su. Beck Ho stands up asking if he meant what he said and questions his plans. Chion Man asks if he is thinking of it as a trick and clarifies about the confidence in the fighting skill of Beck Ho but cannot seem to understand that he cannot win once out of 10 fights. He concludes that Chang Su is overwhelmingly stronger than him and Beck Ho only had his tenacity. While Chang Su has the guts, strength and skills and is a monster with a brain. Chion Man's words make Beck Ho angry and walks back towards the broomsticks. He breaks one of them and picks up the broken stick, points towards Chion Man and says that he talks too much which is annoying. Beck Ho orders him to come straight to the point about the way to win against Chang Su. Beck Ho declares he will beat up Chion Man if he isn't satisfied with the answer given by him, after all this taking and throwing him on the ground. Chion Man says he is not a person who uses his body and says he cannot win against Beck Ho unless he lets his guard down and admits that Beck Ho is really strong who has no fear to challenge him again and again, the vile with no methods and is like a reckless running mad dog. Chion Man says he cannot face people like him since he is going to be overwhelmed by their spirit, but Chang Su is on a different level than such ordinary guys. Chion Man says Beck Ho will be defeated completely, no matter where and how he charges at Chang Su. Being curious about something, he wants to know before he gives him the way and asks about why Beck Ho is desperate to go against Chang Su. When Chion Man asks if he wants to be the leader of second years, Beck Ho says yes. Chion Man asks a follow-up question. If he wants to fight against the third years and become the school leader, Beck Ho makes a blank face. Chion Man says he expected him to be someone who doesn't think. 
Chion Man says Beck Ho has to gather the body if he wants to become the head and not simply rush alone. Chion Man says it is a relief for him that Beck Ho knew the order to go against who first, and calls him a crazy dog with snapped leash and rushed into, just because he is annoyed. Beck Ho gets frustrated and shows him his fists, telling him to shut his mouth and asks if he knew enough about him. Chion Man confirms that he is really a crazy dog by seeing how he got worked up now. Chion Man says he is obvious to read and tells Beck Ho the only option to win against Chong Su is to look far ahead, unlike Beck Ho who only sees the enemy in front of him. So, Beck Ho has to look at the same place as Chong Su and to the point where he can entrust Beck Ho. Making Chong Su trust Beck Ho completely, he can find a moment where Chong Su is not bothered by him, and that is the moment he can utilize to backstab him without any hesitation, knocking him off. Chion Man says this is the only way for him to win against Chang Su and asks if he wants to try it. After some time, on the school's rooftop, Yong Jin Su is sitting at a place and sulking while he recalls the comments of Kong Take previously. A transfer student keeps on smiling at him, which is observed by another third year. He asks the transfer student if he doesn't know how to read the room. The transfer student says he finds it funny that the school second is sulking like that just for one word. The third-year student gets irritated and threatens him while catching his collar. He asks him to read the room since it's already been more than a month since he joined the school. He wonders what Take Bong sees in him to let him into the group and tells him to do well before he rips off his mouth. The transfer student shows his teeth with braces and asks him to rip it off if he feels confident. The transfer student claims that the number three guy only knows how to whisper in his mouth and continues to poke him further. He gets angry and swings his fist at the transfer student, which he evades falling back and kicks his face right at the same moment from below, and does a backflip. The transfer student asks why he thinks Take Bong let him in. He then answers his question that he is strong and calls him a loser among the number that he has seen. The transfer student asks the number third to better be on guard and starts to kick him, which he blocks with some difficulty. He continues to kick him and praises him for doing well, and claims he has to go for a teeth implant and not braces once he lowers his guard down. Kong Take Bong thinks you Bai Chiol, the transfer student, is a crazy one. While Bai Chiol continues to kick him, Yung Jin Su interferes and tells him to stop before he really dies. Bai Chiol turns back to see Yung Jin Su's serious face and gets excited. Bai Chiol calls him a pig head and tells him to come at him if he is confident. When Yung Jin asks if he has no fear, Bai Chiol calls him a mouth fighter and tells him to come at him. Kong Rake Bong is excited to see the situation unfold, but they are interrupted by a student who rushed to the rooftop to report Take Bong that they are in trouble. Take Bong asks what has happened. He says Taesung High School students are gathered at their school gate. Listening to this, everyone's face turns serious. Taesung High School with Sin Myung's six younger brother as the anchor waiting outside the school's gate. He shouts for Du Chong Su to come out. Meanwhile, the seniors gather to see 20 people who have come, mostly from the first and second years. One of them claims that three students from Taesung High came here to take a hold of our school. He asks Take Bong if he can take some students and rush against them. Take Bong clarifies that if they want to take hold of our school, then Sin Myung Sik will have to come personally. He realizes he is going overboard and Take Bong commands them to stay still and not make the problem any bigger. Take Bong decides to watch them since Yung Jin said he solved it well. Meanwhile in class 7 where Beck Ho belongs, everyone except for him gathered towards the windows to see the group of Taesung High students at the gate. When one of them claims they have come for Du Chong Su, they wouldn't believe that a person like him is involved with people like him since he is not a gangster. Suddenly, Chion Man asks Beck Ho what he will do since it had happened, calling him a gangster. Beck Ho recalls his previous conversation with Chion Man where his only way to win over Chong Su is to win his trust and backstab him. Beck Ho asks if he thinks of him as a moron since Chion Man expects him to believe the words of one of the underlings of Chong Su. Chion Man clarifies that he also knew after fighting with him that Beck Ho will never be able to win against him alone. Chion Man says they were friends since middle school and after watching him over these years, he concludes that Chong Su never once failed to accomplish his goal, whether it is exercising, fighting, and even studying. Chong Su always reaches the standards and no matter how big the obstacles are in his way. He compares Chong Su to a bulldozer and Beck Ho a mad dog. He compares the matching between Beck Ho and Chong Su like a match between a fool and an artificial intelligence. Even after this, 
he thinks both of them are the same people. Chion Man sometimes thinks that Chang Su might put him in trouble for pushing ahead without him knowing. He concluded that if he were in his situation, then he'd get behind Chang Su and become the break of him. Beck Ho stands up to him and says he will sort out well, so he asks him to stop pestering him. Beck Ho says to Chion Man if he is that worried about Chang Su, then he should have stopped being his servant and stopped him earlier. Chion Man says he is not a servant to Chang Su. Beck Ho says he'll do what Chion Man has asked and threatens him if he finds out something which he plans for later on. Beck Ho walks towards the gate and thinks that he doesn't care about being a break to Chang Su, as long as he can stab him behind his back as soon as possible. He wonders about the identity of Chang Su, and recalling the actions of his other classmates, he thinks he is some kind of cult leader and also wonders about Chion Man being nice to Chang Su. Sin Myong's six younger brother sees Beck Ho and smiles. Beck Ho looks at him and wonders what's wrong with him since he has more wounds than before. He recalls telling him not to be in groups. Beck Ho thinks of stepping on them. Chang Su appears at his rear and questions if he has that much power to do such a thing. From his speculation, Chang Su states that he can take down three to five people if he performs well. He asks him to step aside since he might get hurt if he is still there. Beck Ho turns to him and asks if he is out of his mind since he was the one who used his name. Chang Su says he knew about it and since this is now his business, he asks Beck Ho to step aside. Chang Su walks towards them and shouts at the gang, calling them Taesung minions and announces that he is Du Chang Su. The ones who came to beat Chang Su OT confused after this announcement and the seniors of their school are wondering what they are doing. Beck Ho asks Chang Su if he is planning to ridicule him and asks if he thinks he will show his thanks to him after this. Chang Su states that Beck Ho might get hurt if he stood here any longer. Beck Ho gets irritated and tries to punch Chang Su, but he evades easily and gives a low kick to Beck Ho, making him fall on the ground. Chang Su announces to the Taesung guys that this is Kong Take Bong area and they have dared to act here. He asks if Sin Myung Sik has ordered them to come here. The younger brother along with the others plan to take down Chang Su first since they have to take down both of them. After listening to the commotion, Kong Take Bong thinks of Chang Su as a sly person for using his name. The students from Taesung High come running towards Chang Su. Chion Man along with Yang Geology and his friends are running in the corridor while telling everyone to move aside. Beck Ho looks at Chang Su, who is about to fight the running crowd. Chang Su punches the students coming towards him. Chang Su continues to hit multiple persons one after the other. He evades the punches of everyone and hits them harder, alternating with fists and kicks. Suddenly, a big figure comes towards Chang Su while saying that he can fight while cursing him. The others start cheering him and calling the wrestling moon. They claim it's over for Chang Su once he gets caught by him since he is like a monster with a height of over 190 centimeter. Chang Su kicks the incoming person on his chin and knocks him out which shocks everyone. The fight continues where Chang Su hits one of them on his neck and starts to dodge the next opponent's wooden stick, punching him on his torso before he can hit Chang Su. He knocks the next three guys with a single punch to their faces. After finishing everyone, he walks towards the remaining members. Fear started to fill in everybody that's left. They start to whisper about his strength and compare him to Chion Su, the leader of Taesung's second years, who is standing behind them and listening to their whispers. Beck Ho was amazed to see Chang Su wipe around 10 people in a flash and this is not like a dogfight between school kids. Beck Ho observes the fast and precise way of knocking everyone and thinks he is going easy against him all this time. Beck Ho now realizes he has been fighting such a monster all this time. Han Chion Su suddenly shouts at everyone for not fighting properly and cannot even go up against one person. He questions them asking what will Myung Sik do to them if they go back to school in this manner and asks if Chang Su is scarier than Myung Sik. Listening to him, everyone stands up with their weapons. Chion Su advises everyone to gang up on him properly and take him down this time. Beck Ho wonders about the power of the name Sin Myung Sik since everyone stood up at his name. Beck Ho feels that Sin Myung Sik is a great person since they stood up and even changed the atmosphere around them even with a crazy person like Du Chang Su ahead of them. He thinks Chang Su won't be able to deal with this situation this time and plans to step ahead, recalling Chion Man's advice to look at the same place as Chang Su. When Beck Ho was about to step up, a group of students ran towards Chang Su and surrounded him to help counter the Taesung High students. Taesung students were amazed to see around 50 students at the spot. 
Yang Geology asks Chang Su if he is all right, to which he replies he is and asks him why he came along with the first years. Chion Man replies they have come to help him and tells Chang Su that he would have told them beforehand if he plans to cause trouble. Yang Geology spots a familiar person and calls Han Chion Su. Chion Su gets frustrated to see him here since they are short in numbers now, but they have to deal with Du Chang Su and even Li Yang Geology. Yun Geology asks how he has been and is a little surprised to see him grow tall. Chion Su thought he had to help them deal only with Chang Su, but more and more students keep coming out. Han Chion Su walks forward and questions Yang Geology if he is crazy and says he thought that the talks with Kong Take Bong went well, but realizes it is not the case. Chan Hian Su claims right at this moment, their school is like declaring war towards Taesung and decides to go back for today since the discussion was different today. He asks if they can handle everything that will happen in the future. Yang Geology wonders if Han Chion Su is threatening him. Du Chang Su tells them to do according to Han Chion Su, which is to stop for today. Chion Su tells them to be prepared for the next time and turns back to Zhang Sik, the younger brother of Sin Myung Sik, to tell him that the situation has become big and advises them to retreat for now. After everyone leaves, Beck Ho wonders if this situation has ended here and looks up to see Chong Su making eye contact with him. Chong Su asks Beck Ho if he doesn't like people who go around in groups and asks him to accompany him. When Beck Ho questions where to, Chong Su names Kong Take Bong and says to defeat him. Chong Su gives him his hand to help Beck Ho stand up. Seeing the smile on Chong Su's mean face creeped out Beck Ho. Kong Take Bong walks towards the group of second and first years who were standing in the ground after the students from Taesung High left. Both sides exchange serious looks for a brief moment, without any words. Beck Ho thinks about Kong Take Bong, who is their school's leader and an active gangster in the organization. He recalls about Kong Take Bong, who would conquer the school in his second year itself and was an unbeatable monster who has the strength, speed, and skills. He thinks Chong Su is going against such an interesting person and decides to throw the first punch if they were going to cause a ruckus now and walks forward. Chong Su catches his head and suddenly bows along with Beck Ho in front of Kong Take Bong and apologizes since he has planned to get a few hits himself and end the situation there itself and explains that he was worked up since they brought up his name. Every student behind Chong Su bows along with him for the apology. Seeing this Yung Jin Su tries to interfere and says that he advised him not to make the problem bigger. Kong Take Bong stops Yung Jin and says that they did a good job and asks them to go inside along with the others. Everyone who was bowing offers their thanks to him while he walks away and orders his men to come along with him. Chong Su gives a weird smile after this and turns back to the second and first years and tells them to get back inside just as Kong Take Bong has ordered. The first years are getting excited on Chong Su giving orders, which is making him creep out. Beck Ho asks Chong Su what is wrong with him since he said that they are going to take down Kong Take Bong and asks why did he bow to him now. Chong Su says it is not the time now since Kong Take Bong is not an opponent who you can pick a fight rashly against and tells Beck Ho to wait for the right time to capture him and asks if he is going to do it with him while smiling at Beck Ho. Beck Ho gets embarrassed and asks if he is confessing his love to him and calls him a stupid cult leader while walking away. Chong Su asks what he was saying and tells him to do it together. When Beck Ho says he doesn't know anything, Chong Su claims he is embarrassed and he also has a cute side of him. Chion Man also says that he is cute, but Yang Geology still has a serious face. Later that evening, at the nightclub Kong Take Bong is waiting outside when a bald-headed person approaches him and tells that the guys they have sent because of one's younger brother problem were beaten up and sent away. He asks if Take Bong is ignoring the rank in the organization to which Kong Take Bong remains silent. He curses Take Bong and asks what he was doing so shamelessly. Kong Taesek Bong questions why he sent them to the school and cause a ruckus. When he says Kong Taek Bong is crossing his line, he replies that is what actually happened. The person tries to provoke him further, but Kong Taek Bong remains silent with his guard up. He realizes that is what happened and starts to walk away from him. He gives a side eye to Kong Taek Bong and warns he has to give up something of his if he gets caught in a ruckus once again. Kong Taek Bong gives a serious look towards him. Around the same time, Beck Ho is walking down the alley and recalling the smiling face of Du Chong Su and thinks that he is good at spitting cringy words with such expressions and labeling him a crazy cult leader. He shifts his thoughts to Kong Take Bong, who is great as he heard and calls Chong Su as an artificial intelligence fighting machine since he can fight against Kong Take Bong if they confront each other. 
He remembers the advice of Chion Man and decides to pin down Chang Su when that happens. Suddenly a hand reaches Beck Ho from behind and grabs him by his neck. Just when he was about to turn around to see, the person who caught him threw him towards a shutter of a closed area. Beck Ho after the impact turns around to see which crazy bastard did it and realizes it was Yang Geology. Yang Geology with an angry face says that he hates annoying people like him and doesn't know how he coaxed Chang Su and Chion Man into believing him. Yang Geology says he heard about his past that he was a shuttle boy in his middle school and warns Beck Ho not to go far. Beck Ho starts to lose his cool. Around the same time, Chion Man and Chang Su were walking home. Chion Man says he is really in trouble and despises the situation. When Chang Su asked about his frustration, he replied Chang Su was the reason for his frustration. Chion Man questions why he would provoke Kong Take Bong. Chang Su asks if he is scared while smiling at him. Chion Man claims he is annoyed by the rank in the organization since he was pushed down by someone as Sin Myung Sik, who is the same age as him. He couldn't believe someone like Sin Myung turned like that and says he must be a lot of trouble for Kong Take Bong. Chang Su claims that is what he planned for. In the same smiling face which irritates Chion Man, Chion Man says Kong Take Bong is already targeting him and asks what good will it be for him to even do such schemes against him. Chion Man says there is no guarantee that he will win face to face with Kong Take Bong and the third years will beat up him if they face them. Chang Su says that is the reason he did it, as their collective strength itself is not enough. His plan was to use Sin Myung Sik and drive Kong Take Bong to a corner and when it happens, they will have a chance to take down those third years. Chion Man asks if he can wait till the seniors graduate since Kong Take Bong must have realized it after seeing the second and first years gathered together. The real reason he didn't hit Chang Su earlier is because he thought of the aftermath and just by looking at Kong Take Bong, he can say that he doesn't only have fist but is also quick at calculating. According to the expectations of Chion Man, he says they cannot beat him and asks Chang Su to endure for a few months until they graduate. Chang Su denies his advice and says he will have to crush him before his graduation at any cost. When Chion Man says why he is willing to take such a risk, Chang Su explains that it will be harder for them to get hold of him after he graduates. Chion Man calls him stubborn and asks what he will become later on, to which he responds that he doesn't know and questions about the whereabouts of Yang Geology. Around the same time, at another place Beck Ho advances towards Yang Geology and swings his right fist very fast but Yang Geology blocks him with difficulty and thinks that he is quite quick in his movements. Beck Ho shifts to his left and punches his face, which is a direct hit. He then continues to punch his torso very hard and says Yang Geology is just a slave of Chang Su, so what if he is a shuttle boy? Beck Ho continues to throw several punches at him, which Yang Geology tries to block and is frustrated at him. Yang Geology finds an opening and kicks Beck Ho on his torso, making him fly back to some distance. Beck Ho recovers from it and after experiencing his strength, he is amazed that it is a lot more than Chang Su. Yang Geology provokes him by saying his punches were lighter since he was the shuttle boy. Beck Ho falls into his trap and advances towards him to deliver a punch, but Yang Geology evades him easily since Beck Ho's movements got bigger as he expected. Yang Geology punches his face, making him fall back due to the impact and he starts to bleed from his nose. Beck Ho calls him a sly and sneaky bastard to which he replies it is strategy. Yang Geology tackles him and pins him on the ground and chokes him. When Beck Ho struggles, he says there is no use for him to struggle since he is completely locked. Beck Ho's mind starts to haze due to the choking and thinks it is embarrassing for him to lose to someone who is like a servant to Chang Su and begins to pinch Yang Geology's legs. Yang Geology loses his arms around Beck Ho due to the sudden pinch from him. Taking this as a chance, he bites his arm and escapes from the chokehold. Yang Geology cries and claims he is a sly person, to which Beck Ho repeats the same words which Yang Geology has said previously and sprints towards him. Poking his eyes, Yang Geology is on his knees, shouting with pain from his eyes. Beck Ho says it is not over yet and gives him a straight punch to his face, knocking him out cold on the ground. Beck Ho sees him and gives an evil smile. The next day, Du Chang Su and Chion Man are in their class, waiting for Yang Geology. Chion Man says Yang Geology hasn't even picked up his call the previous day and still didn't reach school today. Chang Su claims Yang Geology might have overslept. At the same moment, a voice calls for Chang Su, to which they were shocked to see Kong take Bong along with some third-year seniors in their classroom. 
Kong take Bong walks towards Chang Su when he asks what is the matter at this early in the morning. Kong take Bong orders Chang Su to beat the life out of Taesung High students, to which Chion Man and Chang Su get shocked. Yang Geology walks in the corridor while cursing Beck Ho and thinking about the fight with him yesterday. After opening his eyes, Yang Geology is taped to a wall by Beck Ho. Beck Ho asks him how he feels to be tied up and says that he looks like an outcast in this situation. Yang Geology screams at him to release and struggles to take the tape off. Beck Ho advises not to struggle since it will be much harder to remove it since he has experienced it before. Beck Ho questions what was the reason for him to follow and if Chang Su asked him to do. Yang Geology, while struggling, says that it is his neighborhood and that he is not following him. Beck Ho says that is fine if he didn't ask since he got curious on what he was going to do, even though he didn't like the thought of getting along with him. He asks him to take care of Chang Su from beside while pretending to be on his side since he saw both Chang Su and Kiam Man won't have any problem having him. He asks him to lay low since he lost to him, to which Yang Geology denies and says that he is a sly person who has pinched, bite and poked his eyes. Beck Ho provokes him and Yang Geology continues to deny that he lost while struggling to get out of the restraints. Beck Ho suddenly says he feels like taking a piss on the street and opens his zipper and goes near Yang Geology who is shocked and continues to say not to do such a thing. Beck Ho asks again if he lost to him, to which Yang Geology cries and accepts that he is lost and asks him to remove it and move back. Beck Ho immediately takes out his phone and asks him to repeat the words so he can record for evidence and will release him afterwards. Beck Ho suddenly plays the video he recorded the previous day behind him. He gets furious listening to it and turns back to see Beck Ho playing the video. He asks why he is playing that when he is going to keep it. Beck Ho says the video is funny when Yang Geology tries to delete the video. Yang Geology says that he didn't even let him go after recording the video and cries asking what is funny in that. Beck Ho says he doesn't care if he deletes it since it was already backed up and sees Kong take Bong. Yang Geology asks why he was talking about Kong take Bong and asks him to stop the argument and delete it. Suddenly, Yung Jin Su puts a hand on his shoulder and calls him Sushi Head. Yang Geology turns back to see the top brass of the third year students behind him along with Kong Take Bong. When Yung Jin Su threatens Yang Geology, Kong Take Bong stops him and tells him not to hurt his morale since they were about to go to war. Kong Take Bong tells them to try their best and walks away along with the other students. Both Beck Ho and Yang Geology didn't know what they were saying. They reach class 2 where Chang Su and Chion Man are present. Beck Ho and Yang Geology were confused on why they were going to take on Taesung students after they were briefed about the situation. When they ask why, Chion Man explains that Kong Taek Bong is in trouble and Taesung High is not like any normal school since more than 80% of the students are in the organization besides the leader Sin Myung Sik who was disqualified as an athlete due to a violence case. Chion Man says he never once lost first place in judo even Kong Taek Bong might have difficulty to win against him face to face. He claims there is a huge gap in skills and strength, it will be harder to win even if the third years get involved. He turns to Chang Su and says that Kong Taek Bong is basically asking them to go to them and die. Beck Ho asks if they can ignore him, to which Chion Man says that they cannot since Kong Taek Bong personally ordered them to do so and fighting the third years is the worst case scenario since even if they gather all the first and second year, they will fall short of the third years. So he concludes that going all out against Taesung Hai is their only option as they ordered. Since they got in between them, if Sin Myung Sik takes responsibility for the event as higher up in the organization, Kong Taek Bong will pin the blame on Chang Su and eventually, a small wing will be formed in this division. Chang Su says it is not the fault of Beck Ho since he was the one who stirred up the situation and asks them to stop talking about that and gather as many people as possible to go with him tomorrow. When Chion Man asks if he has a plan, Chang Su says they will crush Taesung High at once since it has come to this. Everyone gets shocked and sweats after listening to his statement. In the next scene, we see Taek Bong and his gang gathered on the terrace of a school. He was sitting on his chair, thinking about Chang Su and wondering if he could be beaten up by Taesung High. As he pondered, his smile remained the same. He smiled, and suddenly Jin Su appeared in front of him. Taek Bong asked him what happened. Jin Su, concerned, asked whether the juniors would be alright because their opponent was Taesung High. It was pretty obvious that against Taesung High's seniors, Chang Su didn't stand much of a chance. 
Jin Su then asked Take Bong if he should take some guys with him to help Chong Su out a little. Hearing that, Take Bong didn't look happy. He scratched a chair with his hand. Jin Su realized that he had said something Take Bong didn't like. Take Bong then stood up, walked in front of Jin Su, and said that there are many different kinds of people in the world. Among them are those who try and try only to make the situation worse, and Jin Su was the kind of guy who did just that. He directly told Jin Su to stop trying to do anything. For guys like him, staying put was the best thing to do. However, during this conversation, Bai Chiol, a new transfer student, started laughing loudly. To him, it was funny how Take Bong burned someone like that without using any curse words. Seeing Bai Chiol laughing, Jin Su got angry, turned toward him, grabbed his collar, and told him to stop laughing. Jin Su said that he wasn't a funny guy. But Bai Chiol, instead of backing down, made more annoying remarks, telling Jin Su not to do anything, just like Take Bong had said. Jin Su, clearly irritated, threatened Bai Chiol, saying that if he didn't stop talking, he would rip him apart. Bai Chiol, however, didn't seem scared. He smiled, revealing his braces, and dared Jin Su to go ahead and try. At this point, Take Bong stepped between them and told them that if they had an argument, they should go ahead and fight it out. He declared that the fight would determine who was the true number two at Shin Hyung Hai. Meanwhile, Beck Ho was sitting in a classroom, thinking about what Chang Su had said earlier about taking them down. Suddenly, Kyan Man came up behind him and asked what Beck Ho planned to do tomorrow. He asked Beck Ho whether he was coming along or not. Beck Ho stood up and threw some insults at Kyan Man. Kyan Man responded, saying that Beck Ho wasn't exactly innocent in this whole situation, but if he was scared, he should stay out of it. Beck Ho, getting annoyed, told him that was enough. He then asked Kyan Man some questions about Chong Su. Kyan Man told him to go to the convenience store on the first floor after school. Beck Ho asked him why, and Kyan Man explained that Chong Su worked part-time there to make money to pay the seniors. Beck Ho asked what money he was talking about. Kyan Man explained that most of the fighters from their school graduated and joined the Daesung mob, though not as many as from Taesung Hai. It was a tradition for each school to pay tribute to the Daesung mob. He informed Beck Ho that when Chong Su became the best fighter in his grade, he had to rip off other kids to give tribute to the senior leader. However, Chong Su didn't like taking money from other kids, so he worked part-time instead. The tribute they owed used to be a lot more than what Chong Su could cover with his part-time job, but when he was in the 10th grade, he went with Kong Take Bong to see the seniors and negotiated to lower the amount of tribute. Since Chong Su liberated the younger kids from having to pay, they respected him and remained loyal to him. Kyan Man then put a hand on Beck Ho's shoulder and told him to go see Chong Su after school. He then left. Back on the terrace, the fight between Jin Su and Bai Chiol had begun, with Take Bong watching. Everyone was cheering for Jin Su. Take Bong announced that the winner of the duel would become Shin Hyung Hai's number two. Jin Su thought to himself that Bai Chiol was 50 kilograms lighter than him. From what he had seen of Bai Chiol, he was fast, but he didn't seem to have a signature move. Bai Chiol taunted Jin Su, asking him what he was waiting for. Jin Su thought that even if he took a few hits, he just had to get close to Bai Chiol. He was sure he would win a close-range fight. Jin Su charged toward Bai Chiol, and as he got closer, he tried to grab Bai Chiol's head. However, Bai Chiol dodged it and threw a punch at Jin Su's head. Without wasting any time, Bai Chiol followed up with a spinning kick to Jin Su's face, causing him to bleed and sending him flying to the ground. The cheering stopped, and everyone was in shock. Bai Chiol smiled and asked how someone like Jin Su had become number two. He had knocked him down with just a few punches and a kick. Some of the guys wondered if Bai Chiol might even be stronger than Take Bong. Take Bong then approached Bai Chiol and told him he was throwing some mean punches. He asked if Bai Chiol was planning to pick a fight with him, too. Bai Chiol replied that he had no intention of fighting Take Bong. Suddenly, Jin Su reappeared, still managing to stand, though his body was shaking. He told Take Bong that he wasn't done yet. Take Bong noticed Jin Su's shaking legs and saw that he was still insisting he was Shin Hyung Hai's number two. Take Bong then knocked him down with a single punch. The crowd marveled at how Take Bong had taken out a 120 kilogram guy with one punch. Take Bong smiled and declared that from now on, 
Shin Hyung Hai's number two would be you by Chiol. Everyone agreed with this. Later that night, at a convenience store, someone tossed a banana milk toward Chong Su and gave him 1,001. It was Beck Ho. Chong Su told him that the banana milk was 1,101. Beck Ho told him to drink it because it was for him. Without making eye contact, Beck Ho then asked Chong Su what time he finished work. Chong Su replied that he finished in half an hour. Suddenly, Beck Ho left the convenience store, leaving Chong Su wondering where he was going. On the other side, Yang Geology and Kyan Man were walking on the streets, talking about Beck Ho going to meet Chong Su. Yang Geology asked Kyan Man if Beck Ho might try to pick a fight with Chong Su again. Kyan Man told him that Beck Ho was a wild card, but even he knew better than that. Beck Ho probably couldn't decide if this was his fight or not. Not long ago, he was crazy set on beating Chong Su, and now he suddenly finds himself caught in the middle of Kong Take Bong and Du Chong Su's fight. He was frustrated. He probably needed to learn a few things about Chong Su. Hearing this, Yang Geology smiled and gave Kyan Man a nickname that he didn't like. Kyan Man then kicked him on the bum. But suddenly, Yang Geology asked him why. When the Taesung High minions came to bust into their school, Chong Su went out. If he had stayed back when Choi Bek Ho stepped up, things would have just died down right there. Yang Geology and Kyan Man wondered what Chong Su was thinking, letting things get so out of control. In the next scene, we see a flashback. Kyan Man was standing in an alley, and some bad guys were stealing money from him. The money was for Kyan Man's academic tuition, and he wondered what he would tell his grandma. But suddenly, Chong Su appeared behind him and told him that he was strong enough not to lose his money to guys like that. Chong Su asked him why he was letting them take it. Kyan Man replied that those guys were older and part of the crew that ran the school. If word got out that he could take them on, things would just get too complicated. It was better to let things be. Chong Su asked him if he wanted him to get the money back for him. But if he did, from that day, Kyan Man would belong to him. Kyan Man later told Yang Geology that Chong Su wanted to own Choi Bek Ho and that he was crazy. But Yang Geology didn't take the talk seriously. Later, at the convenience store, Chong Su's shift ended and he greeted the owner and left. As he walked out, he was drinking the banana milk that Bek Ho had given him. He noticed that Bek Ho was still sitting on a chair outside. Chong Su felt the need to tell Bek Ho something. He told him that from now on, Bek Ho was his. Bek Ho wondered what he was talking about. Was he joking? Bek Ho thought Chong Su was completely out of his mind. Bek Ho spat, stood up, and told Chong Su that he was leaving. But Chong Su asked him what was wrong with him. Was he saying no? Did he not want to be his? Chong Su didn't care if Bek Ho didn't want to be. He didn't have a choice. This frustrated Bek Ho, and he told Chong Su to stop talking, or he would beat him to death. But suddenly, Chong Su told him that when he fights, sometimes everything goes white, and he loses consciousness. When he comes to, the other guy is on the ground. Some people call it going berserk, but Chong Su calls it the switch. He explained that when the switch flips, he becomes completely invincible, with no fear and no pain. But if Beck Ho keeps abusing the switch, in the end, he will die a pitiful death. Beck Ho asked him how he knew that. Chong Su replied that he knew because he used to be the same way. He then raised a finger toward Beck Ho and told him that he wasn't using the switch. It was eating him alive. Beck Ho might not grasp the seriousness of the situation because he had never seen someone completely devoured by the switch. Hearing this, Beck Ho got a bit scared. Chong Su told him to be his and leave the switch to him, and he would make sure it never swallowed him whole. He then raised the banana milk and told Beck Ho that there was no need to think it over. Beck Ho owed him a debt. Beck Ho wondered if controlling the switch was something that Chong Su could really manage. The next day, at lunch, a bunch of Shin Hyung High 10th year students gathered. Suddenly, Chong Su and the others arrived in front of them. All the juniors greeted and bowed to Chong Su. Chong Su wondered why so many 10th graders were there. He then walked up to one of the 10th year students. The guy raised his hand and introduced himself as the head of the 10th grade, Won Sangtik. He screamed loudly that today he would die for Chong Su. Chong Su smiled and asked him why he was suddenly talking about dying. Then Chong Su flipped and told Sangtik that he wasn't going with them to fight. 
Hearing this, all the 10th year students said they loved him. After that, all the guys started walking, and along the way, Chang Su ran into Beck Ho who seemed to be joining them. In the next scene, we see Jin Su sitting on a chair with his neck injured. He was thinking about how Bai Chiul beat him in a fight. Suddenly, Yu Bai Chiul came in and asked Jin Su if he was just gonna let him be. He mentioned that some guys were talking behind Take Bong's back, and they had a plan to jump him after school. The newcomer, Bai Chiul, thought he could do whatever he wanted because he was friends with Take Bong. Bai Chiul said that if Take Bong hadn't stepped in yesterday, Jin Su would have wiped the floor with the newcomer. But Jin Su had no intention of fighting anymore. Bai Chiul asked how he could say that, especially after the newcomer took the number two position. But seeing that Jin Su still didn't want to get involved, Bai Chiul said that they were ready, so if Jin Su changed his mind, he should let them know. Bai Chiul then left the classroom, but Jin Su was still angry about being defeated by a newcomer. On the street, Chang Su and his crew were walking when Beck Ho suddenly joined them. Chang Su hugged him and said he was so happy he was there, and that his switch was his now. Seeing the situation, Kayan Man and Yang Geology were embarrassed. Beck Ho was also uncomfortable, so he pushed Chang Su back, grabbed his collar, and told him that if he hugged him or did anything like that again, he'd rip it right off. But Chang Su still wanted to hug him, and Beck Ho pushed him back once more. Beck Ho then told him to go teach Taesung Hai a lesson. Chang Su became serious and agreed. After that, all the guys walked toward Taesung Hai with Chang Su leading them. Soon, they were standing in front of Taesung Hai. In the next scene, we see two lackeys from Taesung Hai ditching school and going outside. They were talking about how Myung Sik had told them to head to the gym because of the Shin Hyung Hai situation. Suddenly, on the road, they saw a guy wearing a Shin Hyung Hai uniform. They told him to get out of there since it was Taesung Hai's area. The guy was Sangtik, and he smiled before walking into another alley. Seeing this, the two Taesung guys thought he was alone, so they decided to get him. They started running and followed him. After Sangtik reached a dead end, the two thought they had him cornered. They planned to beat him, but Sangtik just smiled. Suddenly, the two guys noticed they were surrounded. A large group of Shin Hyung Hai students had gathered around them with Chang Su hiding among them. The two Taesung guys were scared. They asked if the Shin Hyung crew was there to start a war or something. Suddenly, Chang Su stepped forward and said that he had actually been thinking about coming down to meet the Taesung Hai guys, and it was nice to meet them. The two Taesung guys began running, telling Chang Su to wait right there, that they'd be back soon. But suddenly, Beck Ho punched one of them, knocking him out with a single hit. The other guy asked Beck Ho who he was. Beck Ho replied that he was Shin Hyung Hai Jr. Du Chong Su. Yang Geology wondered why Beck Ho was doing that again. He'd gotten into the habit of selling out Chong Su's name. The remaining guy ran toward Beck Ho, overconfident in his position as a senior, but Beck Ho just smiled. In the next scene, at the gym, Myung Sik was sitting in a chair, and his guys were standing in front of him. Myung Sik talked about the fight they lost against Shin Hyung Hai. He told them to show Shin Hyung who was boss, but instead, they got beaten. One guy with a scratch on his face apologized and told Myung Sik that there were just too many Shin Hyung Hai guys, and there was nothing they could do. He offered to gather some more guys and go back. Myung Sik stood up, walked in front of the scratched up guy, and said that while he was saying there were so many guys, Myung Sik had heard that only one guy wiped the floor with all of them. Myung Sik asked if that was true. Suddenly, Myung Sik's brother, Jung Sik, spoke up and confirmed that it was true. He said the guy was named Du Chong Su, and he had crazy moves, knocking out 10 of their guys in the blink of an eye. Jung Sik suggested that Myung Sik go with Wu Sang alone and beat them up. Jung Sik also mentioned that the number two of Shin Hyung Hai's junior class was a guy named Yang Geology, and that the scratched up guy, named Chun Su, went to the same middle school as him. Chun Su was the head of their class. Even if they went back with more guys, they'd still get crushed. So Jung Sik suggested Myung Sik should go by himself to clear up the matter. Hearing this, Myung Sik punched his brother in the head and told him that if he hadn't gotten beaten up and kicked in the first place like an idiot, none of this would have happened. Myung Sik then asked Chun Su if he was up for it. Chun Su told him he got it and would go teach them a thing or two. But suddenly, the gym door opened, and the two guys from earlier came in, injured. 
Behind them, we saw the shadow of Beck Ho. The two guys told Myung Sik that they got beaten up and needed backup. But in the middle of their talk, someone kicked them from behind, knocking them to the ground. It was Beck Ho followed by other Shin Hyung High students. A large number of Shin Hyung guys entered the gym, led by Chong Su. Chong Su walked up to Myung Sik, introduced himself, and told him it was nice to meet him. He said he was Shin Hyung High Junior Du Chong Su. In the next scene, we see Take Bong sitting on a chair on the terrace. He was thinking about how Du Chong Su used to always lower his head to him with a smile, but as soon as he saw an opening, he'd stab him in the back. Chong Su always had his eyes on Take Bong. But Take Bong was happy because when the time came, he would show Chong Su who the real boss was. Suddenly, Someone opened the terrace door and informed Take Bong that the 11th graders and the juniors had gone off to Taesung High with over 50 guys. The informer asked Take Bong what would happen if they actually went over there and beat Taesung High. If they did, it would make them look bad. Take Bong told him there was nothing to worry about. Taesung High could get 300 to 400 guys on their side with a single phone call. 50 guys stood no chance against them. If the goal was just to knock out Shin Myung Sik, they might get it done by outnumbering him, but they could never take down Taesung Hai. Take Bong smiled and said they'd all learn a valuable lesson over there. The former number three, standing beside him, wondered how Take Bong could laugh after backing the kids into a corner like that. On the other side, at the gym, Myung Sik and Chong Su stood face to face. Myung Sik asked what was wrong with them, questioning if they had all lost their minds. Chong Su smiled and told him that he was glad to find him there rather than on the rooftop or something, and that if those two hadn't helped out, they might have had to wait for Myung Sik to come out. Two of Myung Sik's guys apologized for leaking his location, explaining that they didn't have a choice. Myung Sik glared at them angrily and called them losers. Suddenly, Jung Sik dialed a number and told someone to gather the seniors and all the guys and come to the gym because the Shin Hyung High guys had busted in. Myung Sik smiled and told Chong Su that while they had the numbers, they were just in a different weight class. There was no point in running, he said all the Shin Hyung guys were dead right there. But Chong Su took a step forward, standing closer to Myung Sik, and told him that they'd come this far, and they had no intention of running away or going back unscathed. They were all well aware of Taesung Hai's capabilities. After all, Taesung Hai was infamous for having 80% of its student body as part of the mob. Chong Su estimated it would take at least 10 to 15 minutes for Taesung Hai's guys to arrive after the phone call, and that was enough time to hash things out with the seven of them there. Chong Su pointed toward Jung Sik and said their target wasn't the head of Taesung Hai, Shin Myung Sik, but the guy right behind him, his brother, Shin Jung Sik. Chong Su's crew was going to pound on Shin Jung Sik for the next 15 minutes. Chong Su asked Myung Sik if that sounded right, even if he was fooled. Jung Sik was still his brother. Hearing this, Myung Sik became angry. Chong Su told him that he'd heard Myung Sik was a famous youth judo athlete before, so he had a proposal. Instead of putting a lot of guys in harm's way, they should do a five on five group battle. Hearing this, both the Taesung Hai and Shin Hyung Hai guys were surprised. Chong Su added that if Myung Sik's answer was no, that was fine, but if he accepted, Chong Su would send his guys home leaving only five of them there, and at least Jung Sik wouldn't get pummeled half to death. Myung Sik, after hearing how Chong Su had wiped the floor with ten guys in an instant, had assumed he was thick-headed. But now, he realized Chong Su was clever too, with enough guts to drop in and propose a deal. Myung Sik thought Chong Su was too good to waste away under Kong Take Bong. Suddenly, Jung Sik screamed, asking what kind of trick Chong Su was trying to pull, and told Myung Sik not to listen or believe him. Jung Sik claimed Chong Su was just bluffing because he was stuck. But Myung Sik grabbed Jung Sik by the collar and threw him in front of Chong Su. Jung Sik had no idea why his brother was doing that. Myung Sik told Jung Sik to shut his mouth and asked Chong Su if he was sure about his offer. Chong Su replied that if he wasn't sure, he wouldn't have come there in the first place. Myung Sik then told him that if he won, Chong Su would work for him. Chong Su agreed to the deal. Myung Sik then backed off and told Jung Sik that if he lost, he was going to kill him himself. Jung Sik became quite nervous. On the other side, Chong Su told Kai and Man to instruct everyone to go home, except for Yang Geology, Beck Ho, and Dong Chan Kai and Man then relayed the message, 
telling everyone to leave. Some of them hesitated, wondering how they could leave after coming all that way. But at Kyan Man's order, the guys started to leave. Kyan Man looked at them and called them disloyal. Chong Su then placed a hand on his shoulder and told Kyan Man it was okay to throw the round if he couldn't handle it. But suddenly, Kyan Man became angry because Chong Su hadn't told him they were going to start something like this. Chong Su asked if he wanted to go first or second. Kyan Man replied that they needed a heads up to either prepare for what was bound to happen or make a run for it. Chong Su said he was sure and apologized. From behind, Sang Tik, who was still there, volunteered to go first. Yang Geology stepped forward and asked why he was still there. All the freshmen had been told to go home. Sang Tik told him to watch Kyan Man, but Chong Su agreed to let him go first. Sang Tik then stood right in front of Jung Sik. Jung Sik told him that he was just a freshman, so what did he think he was doing? But suddenly, Sang Tik punched him in the chest, causing Jung Sik a great deal of pain. Sang Tik screamed that he would die for Chong Su. Jung Sik wondered what was wrong with him. Chong Su smiled and told Sang Tik not to do things like that. Sang Tik then punched Jung Sik in the face, leaving him no chance to fight back. Jung Sik somehow dodged a punch because he was moving blindly. Seeing that, Sang Tik became angry and tried to kick him in the face, but his leg didn't even touch Jung Sik, and instead, he fell to the ground. Sensing an opportunity, Jung Sik tried to get closer, but Sang Tik suddenly stood up and pushed him back. Sang Tik thought it was so embarrassing that he had fallen to the ground, and Jung Sik even started mocking his kick, saying he was trying to kick the air. Hearing that, Sang Tik punched him again. Watching the fight, Bek Ho wondered if Sang Tik was really the strongest guy in the 10th grade. On the other side, seeing Jung Sik being beaten up by a junior, Myung Sik became very angry. Sang Tik was throwing punch after punch at Jung Sik, but somehow, Jung Sik managed to block the attacks with his two hands. Embarrassed by the fact that he was being beaten up by a junior, Jung Sik blindly attempted a kick, and luckily, his foot hit Sang Tik in the groin. For a few seconds, Sang Tik froze like a statue, and then suddenly screamed in pain. Seeing this, Jung Sik smiled and seized the opportunity to attack. He punched Sang Tik in the face repeatedly. Sang Tik's mouth started bleeding, and his body began shaking. Jung Sik then removed his watch from his wrist and used it as a weapon. He taunted Sang Tik, asking how he dared attack a senior. Despite his injuries, Sang Tik stood there, mocking Jung Sik's punches saying they were as weak as an old man's. Enraged, Jung Sik punched him in the face again with the watch on his fist, hitting him over and over. The Shin Hyung High guys looked on seriously. After one particularly strong punch, Sang Tik collapsed to the ground. Jung Sik told him to never disrespect a senior again. Jung Sik then flipped back and told Sang Tik to give him respect next time if he valued his life. But suddenly, Sang Tik stood up, despite his injured state, and called Jung Sik a grandpa. Jung Sik smiled and asked if he really wanted to die. Sang Tik responded that he would die for Chong Su today. He got back into a fighting stance. Jung Sik, irritated, said Sang Tik didn't know when to quit and that if he wanted to die, he would oblige. Jung Sik moved to hit Sang Tik again, aiming for his head, but Kyan Man stepped in between them, kicking Jung Sik's hand, causing the watch to break into two pieces. Jung Sik angrily asked Kyan Man what was wrong with him. Kyan Man looked at Sang Tik and told him he had done well. Sang Tik, despite his injuries, insisted he could still fight. Jung Sik, now frustrated, asked if they were switching fighters. Kyan Man told him to shut up. Jung Sik then turned to Myung Sik, complaining that it wasn't fair and demanding he say something. But Kyan Man calmly removed his glasses and declared that the first round was their loss and the second round would begin now. Upon hearing this, Jung Sik started jumping and dancing, celebrating his lucky win. He approached Myung Sik, boasting that he could pull his own weight and asking if Myung Sik was proud of him. But Myung Sik coldly told him he was scared inside and pushed him away. Watching Kyan Man, Myung Sik thought to himself that the guy was acting tougher than he needed to, but it was a good attitude. It was going to be fun for him to watch Kyan Man get beaten up. Suddenly, Myung Sik called over a wrestler known as the Wrestling Monster and told him to go have a field day with Jung Sik. The Wrestling Monster agreed and came forward, towering over Kyan Man. 
As the wrestling monster approached, Kyan Man realized how tall he was, at least 190 centimeters. The wrestling monster shouted loudly, calling out to Chong Su, telling him not to send out minions and to come out himself. He boasted that it wasn't going to be the same as last time when they met and he let his guard down. The wrestling monster claimed that Chong Su didn't remember him, but Chong Su genuinely had no recollection of meeting him. The wrestling monster insisted that they had met not long ago, only two days prior at his school. He screamed at Chong Su to stop pretending not to know him, but Chong Su simply assured him that he would remember next time. Kyan Man jokingly commented that an obsession like that was considered stalking. Hearing this, the wrestling monster lost his mind and charged at Kyan Man, aiming to punch him. But Kyan Man took advantage of the height difference, smoothly ducked down, dodging the punch, and countered with a hit to the wrestling monster's belly, followed by a punch to his head. The Taesung High guys and Myung Sik were all shocked, as a single punch to the head caused the wrestling monster to collapse to the ground. Kyan Man declared that it was over and that the score was now one to one. He then put his glasses back on and returned to the Shin Hyung High guys. Beck Ho, watching in awe, wondered how Kyan Man was so strong. Yang Geology, on the other hand, insisted that Kyan Man was definitely no match for him. Beck Ho's comment angered Yang Geology, who boasted that he was much stronger than Kyan Man. Yang Geology explained that although he might look like a pushover now, he used to do judo until his freshman year and had been quite a fighter before he decided to focus on studying. Suddenly, behind them, the wrestling monster stood up, and Chang Su noticed. Beck Ho, distracted, was showing Yang Geology a video. Chang Su quickly told Kyan Man that the wrestling monster was back on his feet, but it was too late. The wrestling monster grabbed Kyan Man from behind. He attempted to flip Kyan Man's body 180 degrees boasting that he was just getting started. However, he failed to flip Kyan Man and instead fell backward onto the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Kyan Man grabbed the wrestling monster by the neck from behind. The wrestling monster struggled to break free but eventually lost consciousness. Kyan Man then calmly walked back to Chong Su and smiled, declaring that he had won the round. Sang Teek couldn't believe his eyes. He had heard that Kyan Man was tough, but he had no idea just how strong he really was. Sang Teek then screamed that he respected Kyan Man, calling him awesome, but Kyan Man ignored the compliment. For the next round, Myung Sik sent Chun Su. Seeing this, Yang Geology told Beck Ho that he should go against Chun Su. He explained that they went to the same middle school and Chun Su was the top dog of his class at Taesung High. However, Yang Geology had no idea how Chun Su became the top dog of the entire junior class, so he was sure Beck Ho would be able to handle him. Yang Geology then speculated that the fourth fighter from Taesung High would probably be Yung Wu Sang, the number two of the senior class. Wu Sang, standing at two meters tall, was like an African giraffe, while Beck Ho was only 170 centimeters tall. Yang Geology thought he was a better match for Wu Sang, since he was 188 centimeters tall. But suddenly, Beck Ho smiled and pushed Yang Geology to the ground. Yang Geology protested, telling him that he was a mismatch for Wu Sang. Beck Ho replied that he was going into the mismatch anyway, then showed Yang Geology the video from earlier, using it to blackmail him again. On the other side, Chang Su and the others had no idea what they were talking about. Kain Man told them it wasn't the time for that. Chun Su, seeing Yang Geology, called him out for a fight. Yang Geology agreed to fight, but Beck Ho joked that the weaklings were going up against each other. Yang Geology then approached Chun Su and asked him how he had the guts to challenge him. He reminded Chun Su of how he beat him up in middle school. Hearing this, Chun Su became nervous about the fight. Yang Geology taunted him further, saying it wasn't enough that he beat him in middle school. This time, he'd teach him a real lesson. Yang Geology then assumed a fighting stance. In the next scene, there was a flashback to two years ago at Kangchun Middle School. Yang Geology and Chun Su stood face to face. Chun Su asked if Yang Geology was really learning mixed martial arts, to which Yang Geology replied that he was. Chun Su then mentioned Taekon Middle School, which was notorious for being a school of thugs. He explained that some guys from Taekon were showing up at the PC Cafe near their school, and they had decided to fight them over turf. Chun Su asked Yang Geology to join them calling him a thug as well, 
and warning him not to be too friendly. Hearing this, Chun Su's guys got a little excited, but Chun Su calmed them down, telling them they would fight Yang Geology later. That day, Chun Su was watching Yang Geology. Suddenly, a guy approached Yang Geology from behind and warned him not to go against them. The guy told Yang Geology that Han Chun Su was bad news. During a fight to decide who would be the top dog at their school, another guy pulled out a knife. In response, Chun Su took the knife and cut his own face. The other guy got so scared that he kneeled before Chun Su, and that's how Chun Su became the top dog. He was completely mental. But Yang Geology didn't believe it, saying Chun Su was just crazy, and the best medicine for insanity was a good beating. The guy warned him not to try that. At night, Chun Su and his guys waited somewhere for the take on middle school guys. One of Chun Su's guys called someone, and Chun Su wondered what was taking them so long. Chun Su asked what was happening. The guy replied that he had a friend at Taekon Middle School and asked him if he knew anything. He said all five of the Taekon guys had been beaten up by one of the kids they picked on, and they were all in the hospital. Chun Su smiled and said they didn't even need to fight to beat them. Then, Yang Geology was left to settle the matter. The next day, at school, in a public restroom, Yang Geology was surrounded by Chun Su and his guys. Chun Su mocked Yang Geology for hiding in the restroom. He told him he couldn't see the order of things anymore. Yang Geology replied that his vision was perfect, then suddenly kicked Chun Su, sending him flying into one of the toilet stalls. Chun Su tried to stand up, but Yang Geology charged at him and hit him on the head, causing his nose to bleed. Chun Su's guys were shocked, but before they could react, Yang Geology locked himself and Chun Su inside the stall. After some time, Yang Geology emerged, dragging Chun Su by his hair. Seeing this, all of Chun Su's guys were terrified. Yang Geology threw Chun Su toward them and told them to get him out of there. In the present, the fight between Yang Geology and Chun Su began again. Yang Geology charged at Chun Su and tried to punch him, but Chun Su countered, landing punches on Yang Geology instead. Yang Geology stepped back, wiping the blood from his nose, and realized Chun Su knew how to box. Now he understood how Chun Su became the top dog of his grade. Yang Geology rushed at him again, trying to land a hit, but Chun Su ducked and dodged, delivering several punches to Yang Geology's face. Chun Su stepped back and taunted Yang Geology, asking what had happened to him and if he had gone soft after hanging around Chong Su. Furious, Yang Geology charged again, shouting that he couldn't see anything clearly anymore. Chun Su replied that his vision was perfect and that he could see just fine. As Yang Geology got closer, he tried to throw a straight punch at Chun Su's face, but Chun Su anticipated it, dodging again and landing a clean punch on Yang Geology's face. The impact knocked Yang Geology to the ground. Chun Su smiled and said the fight was just getting started. Yang Geology stood up, realizing that Chun Su was using outboxing techniques to compensate for the difference in their size and power. He was light on his feet and threw accurate punches. Chun Su was no longer an amateur. The only upside for Yang Geology was that Chun Su's punches were light because he was carrying his weight on his heels, so they weren't strong enough to knock him out. However, the damage would accumulate if he kept taking hits. Yang Geology reminded himself that Chun Su was no longer the kid he used to know. If he fought standing up, he was no match for him. He needed to pin Chun Su to the ground. Yang Geology charged at him again, trying multiple times to take Chun Su down, but Chun Su didn't even let him get close. On the other side, seeing the fight, Kyan Man wondered what Yang Geology was doing, running into an opponent much faster than him. Beck Ho knew that Yang Geology would have been much easier to go up against. Beck Ho then showed the video to Kyan Man, the one where he beat Chun Su earlier. Kyan Man remarked that Yang Geology should have pinned Chun Su to the ground right from the start, but he had underestimated his opponent, and now the damage was adding up. After some time, Yang Geology stood up, but his legs were shaking, something Chun Su noticed as an opportunity. Chun Su punched Yang Geology in the face and then in the stomach. Yang Geology somehow managed to stay standing. Chun Su wondered why Yang Geology was taking so many punches. But then Yang Geology suddenly smiled and said that Chun Su had come a long way. It seemed like just yesterday he was weeping like a little fool, holding onto the toilet bowl. Hearing this, Chun Su was shocked. 
A flashback showed Chun Su begging Yang Geology to stop beating him in the toilet during their middle school days. Remembering this moment, Chun Su lost his mind and tried to punch Yang Geology again. That was Yang Geology's chance. Chun Su's weight shifted forward, and as his fist came toward him, Yang Geology suddenly swung his entire body, concentrating all his power into a single punch. Chun Su missed his shot, and the powerful punch from Yang Geology hit him right on the chin, knocking him unconscious as he fell to the ground. After that, Yang Geology knelt beside Chun Su, reflecting on how hard Chun Su had worked to get to this level, and he respected that, but even so, he couldn't allow himself to be knocked out by a single punch. Yang Geology threw punches at Chun Su's face, trying to wake him up. Kyan Man came over, grabbed Yang Geology from behind, and told him it was over. He had won. Beck Ho, observing, remarked that Yang Geology had barely won with a lucky punch, showing zero sense of shame. Meanwhile, outside the gym, more Taesung High guys arrived. Two of them, who had earlier been beaten by Beck Ho, stood in front of the gym door. One of them told Beck Ho to open the door, but the two replied that Myung Sik had told them not to go in, warning that he would kill anyone who did. Inside the gym, the next round was starting and Beck Ho was up. He stretched his arms and asked Chong Su how bad his opponent was. Chong Su replied that he was pretty bad since he was the best fighter at Taesung High. Beck Ho, unfazed, said not to worry because he would finish the fight. Yang Geology and Kyan Man joked that they hoped Beck Ho would lose, but Beck Ho shot them the middle finger. As Beck Ho reached the center of the gym, he told Myung Sik that the score was now 2 to 1, and if he won, it would be all over. Myung Sik agreed, saying he was a man of his word. Beck Ho then threatened that if Myung Sik went back on his word, he'd tell everyone that Myung Sik was a thug. Hearing that, Myung Sik looked toward Wu Sang, who said he would teach Beck Ho a lesson about how to talk. Wu Sang, much taller than Beck Ho, stepped forward. He called Beck Ho Shorty, which angered Beck Ho, who called Wu Sang a mantis in return. Wu Sang suddenly attempted a kick to Beck Ho's face, but Beck Ho saw it coming, stepped back, and dodged it. However, Wu Sang's leg slightly grazed Beck Ho's nose, causing it to start bleeding. Beck Ho thought to himself that Wu Sang's legs were long. Standing in a fighting posture, Wu Sang indeed resembled a mantis. Beck Ho asked if he was using a mantis method, but Wu Sang corrected him, saying it was called Muay Thai. Wu Sang didn't clench his fists, preparing to kick again from a distance. Both fighters ran toward each other. Wu Sang attempted another kick, and Beck Ho thought he could dodge it and land a punch on Wu Sang's head, but the kick connected with his head, and he couldn't complete his punch. Wu Sang had changed the direction of his kick, which confused Beck Ho. Beck Ho fell to the ground, and Wu Sang kicked him again like a football. Somehow, Beck Ho managed to stand, thinking that Wu Sang's kicks were almost as accurate and fast as punches. Wu Sang taunted Beck Ho, telling him there was nothing he could do other than scream and run. This angered Beck Ho, who ran toward Wu Sang again. Wu Sang kicked him once more, but this time, Beck Ho blocked it with his hand and attempted to punch Wu Sang in the head. However, Wu Sang responded with a punch to Beck Ho's face, followed by another to his chest, sending Beck Ho flying backward. Kyan Man remarked that, even though Wu Sang was Taesung High's number two, Beck Ho wasn't an easy opponent. Wu Sang had technique, speed, and power, he had it all. Yang Geology assured Kyan Man that Beck Ho wouldn't lose so easily. Suddenly, Kyan Man showed Yang Geology a video on his phone, and Yang Geology screamed, demanding to know why he had that video. Yang Geology explained that, as seen from the video, Beck Ho played dirty, beyond anyone's wildest imagination. He was sure Beck Ho wouldn't let Wu Sang win easily. He would pull some dirty tricks to win and then beat Wu Sang. Yang Geology requested Kyan Man to delete the video, but he refused. On the other side, Beck Ho stood up again from the ground, but Wu Sang quickly approached and kicked him on his legs and arms. Beck Ho's legs were shaking, and he felt intense pain, screaming as he bent his knees. Wu Sang then raised his leg and kicked him in the head, causing Beck Ho's head to collide with the floor. Seeing that, all the Shin Hyun guys were surprised, while Yang Geology wondered how Wu Sang could move so fast for someone so tall. Thinking that Yung Wu Sang must be as strong as Chang Su, Beck Ho remained motionless on the ground, 
leading Kayan Man to wonder if he was dead. But Wu Sang didn't stop there. He kicked Beko's head as if it were a football. Seeing this, Yang Geology and Kayan Man grew concerned and thought about rescuing him. But Chong Su stopped them. Kayan Man told Chong Su that it was already over, and Beck Ho was just getting pounded. There was no way they could just stand there and watch. Chong Su asked them if they thought they had come there to compete in a sports game or something. They had all barged in for a fight. And if Beck Ho didn't beat Wu Sang, neither could any of them. Beck Ho took so many hits to the head that Wu Sang thought it was enough and backed off. But suddenly, Beck Ho's hand moved, and Chong Su said that Beck Ho wasn't going to lose like that. Beck Ho stood up again, and Wu Sang, watching his back, noticed that Beck Ho didn't seem normal anymore. Chong Su remarked that the switch was on, and Beck Ho looked insane. Though Beck Ho had lost consciousness, his body still wanted to fight. Wu Sang realized that Beck Ho wasn't fully conscious anymore. Wu Sang tried to kick him again, but this time, Beck Ho grabbed his leg and attempted to punch Wu Sang's head. However, Wu Sang dodged it. Wu Sang then shifted his weight on the leg Beck Ho had grabbed and kicked Beck Ho in the neck with his other leg. But now, Beck Ho looked more energetic. He ran toward Wu Sang again. Wu Sang wondered how Beck Ho could still get up after a blow like that and dash straight at him. At that point, Beck Ho was nothing more than a beast running on pure instinct, and if Wu Sang didn't stay sharp, he was done for. When Beck Ho got closer, Wu Sang first threw a knee at his face and punched straight at him, but Beck Ho didn't step back. Wu Sang hit Beck Ho's head with his knee again and punched him in the chest, but somehow, Beck Ho managed to endure the hits. He grabbed Wu Sang's collar and slammed their heads together. Then, Beck Ho tried to punch Wu Sang's head, but Wu Sang dodged it. Wu Sang grabbed Beck Ho's head with both hands and kneed him. But before he could hit him again, Beck Ho punched Wu Sang in the belly, breaking free from his grip. Wu Sang removed his mask and said, This is getting interesting. Yang Geology wondered how Beck Ho wasn't feeling any pain. Chong Su explained that at this point it wasn't a matter of winning or losing, it was about survival. Beck Ho ran toward Wu Sang again, and Wu Sang, frustrated, said, you don't know when to quit, calling Beck Ho a zombie. Meanwhile, Beck Ho's vision had turned purple and blurry. Suddenly, Chong Su stepped between them, blocking Wu Sang's kick aimed at Beck Ho. The impact from the collision between Chong Su's leg and Wu Sang's made Wu Sang's leg go numb, and it began shaking. Chong Su then told Beck Ho to turn off the switch, and Beck Ho suddenly regained consciousness. Chong Su told Wu Sang that the fight was over. But if he still wanted to continue, he was ready. Beck Ho, however, insisted that he wasn't done yet. Just then, Yang Geology grabbed Beck Ho from behind, joking that he was losing. Meanwhile, Kyan Man came over and also joked, saying Beck Ho was all talk but nothing more than a punching bag. The two pulled Beck Ho away from the middle of the fight. Wu Sang, angry, asked Chang Su if this was all a joke to him. But Myung Sik told him to calm down because it was getting more entertaining for him. Myung Sik then told Wu Sang to take a break, as he stepped in front of Chong Su, declaring that he was joining the fight for the final round. Beck Ho remarked that Chong Su was trying to go after Kong Take Bong. He explained that the seniors would overpower them by a landslide if they fought them head on, and they would be dead meat for sure. The only chance they had was if they fought like they were today. Myung Sik agreed with that as he was all about pride and saving face. However, Kong Take Bong didn't care about that as he was just a thug. If Take Bong even suspected for a moment that Chong Su might lose, he wouldn't engage. But if Chong Su could beat Myung Sik, who was similar to Take Bong in both build and ability, Chong Su thought he'd have a chance against Take Bong. Kyan Man thought to himself that the only way to stop Chong Su from starting that rash and unreasonable fight was for him to lose to Myung Sik. Kyan Man wasn't interested in spending the rest of high school fighting. He wanted to study, go to college, and find a girlfriend. So, even if Chong Su went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Myung Sik, Kyan Man planned to tell him he lost. And if Chong Su won, Kyan Man's plan was to hit him over the head from behind. Hearing this, Beck Ho and Yang Geology started laughing. On the other side, Myung Sik and Chong Su stood in their fighting postures. Myung Sik told Chong Su not to hesitate just because of his seniority. Chong Su replied that it was never his intention to hesitate. He then threw a punch toward Myung Sik, 
hitting him in the face, followed by another punch that landed on Myung's sixth shoulder. Chong Su targeted Myung's sixth leg and kicked it. Seeing this, Myung's sixth smiled, impressed by Chong Su's power. Kyan Man, noticing that Myung Sik was taking some hits, grew concerned, wondering why Myung Sik was getting beaten. Myung Sik reflected that Chong Su had quick, accurate one two punches and a powerful low kick. No wonder he had knocked out the 10 guys Myung Sik had sent his way. However, he also thought Chong Su's punches were a bit lighter, probably because they were in different weight classes. Chong Su thanked him for his fair judgment. Myung Sik then warned that he would now fight seriously. As Myung Sik stepped up, slowly closing the distance, Chong Su realized that Myung Sik was planning to use judo techniques. If they fought in close proximity as Myung Sik intended, it might be risky for Chong Su. He had to keep a safe distance, as he was faster than Myung Sik. Chong Su tried to punch Myung Sik straight in the face, but Myung Sik noticed and blocked the punch with his hand. Myung Sik then pulled one hand back, attempting to slap Chong Su, but Chong Su dodged it and punched Myung Sik in the belly. However, Myung Sik grabbed Chong Su's collar, and Chong Su realized he was caught. Chong Su tried to squeeze Myung Sik's hand to break free, but it had no effect. Yang Geology grew concerned, wondering why Chong Su had allowed himself to get caught, knowing that Myung Sik's specialty was judo. Beck Ho also thought it was over, but Kyan Man was happy that his plan was going as expected. Myung Sik raised his other hand and slapped Chong Su in the face. He attempted another slap, but this time, Chong Su dodged it and took off his jacket, managing to escape from Myung Sik's grip. Using the jacket to blind Myung Sik's vision, Chong Su kicked him in the face, but Myung Sik blocked the kick with his hand. Suddenly, Chong Su flipped and kicked Myung Sik's thigh, successfully landing the hit causing Myung Sik to take a few steps back. Myung Sik grew angry, as Chong Su was jumping all over the place. Chong Su thought even that wasn't enough to knock him down. Myung Sik then threw a punch toward Chong Su, saying he was helping him jump even higher with his punches. However, Chong Su was ready for the impact and blocked it with both hands. The force of the punch made Chong Su slide back, but Myung Sik moved in his direction and punched him in the face. As Myung Sik threw a second punch, Chong Su slipped away from it, shocking Myung Sik. Myung Sik threw another punch, this time straight at Chong Su's head, confident that this punch would definitely hit its mark and couldn't be dodged. As the punch neared Chong Su's face, Chong Su smiled. The punch landed, and Chong Su fell far away onto the ground, blood dripping from his mouth. Seeing him on the ground, Myung Sik thought Chong Su was joking with him. He called out to Chong Su to get up and stop overacting. Hearing this, Chong Su smiled, stood up, and asked Myung Sik how he could accuse him of overreacting after that powerful punch. Chong Su then declared that he had lost the fight. The Taesung High guys smiled, while on the other side, the Shin Hyung High group looked sad. Myung Sik approached Chong Su, asking what kind of game he was playing. Chong Su replied that there was no need to continue the fight any longer. Myung Sik assumed that Chong Su never intended to take down Taesung Hai. He asked Chong Su why, if that was his plan, he had risked everything by telling his boys to go home. Myung Sik could have easily pretended to accept the offer and then beaten all the Shin Hyun guys, although that wasn't something he would do. Myung Sik realized that whatever Chong Su's plan was, the fact that he made such a deal meant he intended to reduce damage rather than actually win. Myung Sik speculated that Chong Su was there because Take Bong had sent him. If Chong Su had said no to Take Bong, his school life would have been hell, so he had no choice but to come. Chong Su smiled, stood up, and told Myung Sik that he was impressed Myung Sik had seen through him. He added that no wonder Myung Sik was ranked higher than Take Bong. It wasn't easy to have both that physique and that intelligence. Hearing this, Chun Su, from behind, asked Myung Sik if that meant Take Bong was behind all of this. He remarked that Take Bong must be out of his mind and that Myung Sik couldn't just let him go. He also expressed his dislike for Take Bong's attitude toward him. Hearing this, Myung Sik became serious and told Chun Su that Take Bong was still his buddy. Even though they went to different schools in their work life, Take Bong was still Chun Su's senior, and he couldn't challenge him just because he didn't like his attitude. Myung Sik then asked Chun Su if just because he didn't like how Myung Sik ran things. 
Chun Su was going to come after him too. Chun Su bowed toward Myung Sik and apologized, admitting he wasn't thinking straight. Myung Sik then told him to get back in line because he was still talking to Chong Su. Myung Sik continued, saying to Chong Su that Take Bong hadn't sent him to take them out. He wanted Myung Sik to beat him. Hearing this, Chong Su realized Myung Sik was right about everything, confirming that he really was a beast. Myung Sik told Chong Su that he didn't know why Take Bong had it out for him, but from now on, Myung Sik would cover for Chong Su. Myung Sik then offered a proposal to work for him. This shocked all the Shin Hyung Hai guys. Myung Sik put a hand on Chong Su's shoulder, saying that if he worked for him, he'd be on the fast track to the top. Myung Sik would even introduce him to the alumni who ran the core mob, ensuring that not even Take Bong would be able to touch him from now on. Chong Su replied that working for Myung Sik would mean joining the mob, and he had no intention of becoming a thug. Myung Sik was shocked to hear this. Chong Su continued, saying that, however, if Myung Sik ever needed his help for something, he would help him out one time. Myung Sik asked if Chong Su really thought he would ever need his help. Chong Su believed he would, suggesting that Myung Sik might need him when he decided to take down Take Bong. He pointed out that the fact Take Bong had sent him over meant Take Bong was undermining Myung Sik, and soon, Take Bong would face him head on. Take Bong wouldn't be an easy match, so Chong Su was sure Myung Sik would need him one day. Chong Su's purpose for being there was now revealed to go all the way against Take Bong. Later that night, we see Myung Sik and Chun Su walking down a street, both with bandages on their faces. Chun Su asked Myung Sik if it was really okay to let Chong Su go like that, even if he was acting on behalf of Take Bong. It didn't change the fact that he had jumped Jung Sik, and Chun Su didn't feel right about it. He had looked into Chong Su a bit and discovered that he was the valedictorian of his class, not the type to run with guys like them. Chun Su asked if, when people found out, it wouldn't damage their reputation to have let him off without any serious consequence. Myung Sik admitted it was embarrassing but also true. He added that Chong Su was definitely something else. He knew how to manipulate a risky situation and turn it into an opportunity for a counterattack. Chong Su had a technique to execute it all. He wasn't afraid to jump headfirst into the fire if it meant he could destroy any obstacles in his path. But when it came to handling a situation, he was cold and objective. Myung Sik thought that if Chong Su had worked for him, even for a short while, it would have been like he had grown wings. Myung Sik told Chun Su not to worry about it, as Chong Su would never be able to leave that field. He urged Chun Su to stop wasting his time worrying about something so trivial and to get his head straight. Meanwhile, we see Take Bong standing outside Daesung nightclub, smiling as he thought about how Chong Su was probably crying like a little baby somewhere. He was curious to see his face. Take Bong also suspected that Myung Sik might be suspicious of him, but since there was no evidence, he could just deny everything, and Myung Sik wouldn't be able to hold anything against him. However, suddenly, Take Bong saw Myung Sik arriving at the club, and to his shock, he noticed that Myung Sik was injured. Myung Sik walked up to him and thanked him for the present.